folks have been worried about what exactly chat GPT looks like in terms of cheating. But I, I'm gonna explore what it looks like as a learning tool, and in particular, what it looks like as a learning tool in math. So one of the hardest things for uh, students is the notion of a p-value. What exactly does it mean? What exactly does it look like? And if you go to p-value online, there's some great examples. There are pictures. You can look at you know, these different explanations explained by a scientist, critical values. So there are visuals. If I type in p-value and um, I look at videos, there are a lot of different examples. So I would start by saying, look, this is not gonna replace the role of video. This is not gonna replace the role of uh, direct instruction. But even then, sometimes students need a little bit of extra help. So they're gonna go to ChatGPT and they're gonna just look for a refresher by asking what is a p-value. And the AI gives a pretty good answer. So it'll take a few seconds. The probability of observing a test statistic, it's extreme in the height, right. Um, but as I look at this, it's a little bit complicated. If I am a, say, 17-year-old student and I'm struggling with this, I might need it to be in simpler terms. So explain this in simpler terms to a, and I'm going to say 15-year-old. And notice, it's going to give me a new answer. And it says, for example, if you flip a coin, now it's giving me a specific example. And I'm using this to try to build some conceptual understanding in math. If I don't like it, I can click the try again button. And it's pretty good. And I'm looking at this and I'm realizing, all right, this definition is pretty clear. But for me, again, I'm thinking about like if I'm a, a 17 year old student and I'm st starting to understand this, I'm still going to have some questions. So one of my questions might be, how do I know if the p-value is reasonable? One way to determine if it's reasonable is to compare it to predetermined threshold called alpha level or significance. And again, I'm looking at this and I'm saying um, it might be a little bit complex, a little bit you know, confusing. So I'm gonna reframe my question and ask, how do I know if my p-value is unreasonable? Explain it in simple terms. And again, I'm setting parameters for the AI. So now I'm looking at this and I'm a student and I'm beginning to develop a conceptual understanding. I'm clarifying some things that are confusing for me. I'm wondering about how this works. I'm thinking about, you know, um, all right, so when you're doing an experiment, it's allowing me to see what's reasonable, what's not. But I wanna know, do we use p-values in correlational studies? Because everything seems to be all about something that's experimental and I'm wondering, you know, does it have to have a cause and effect, right? Does it have to be causal? And so I go to correlational studies and it's letting me know if it's small, if it's large, what to look for, what to pay attention to. And now I wanna know, can you give me a p-value example from basketball? I love basketball, but I wanna think about how would it be used in sports. And so it's going to give me something a little bit more concrete. So now I'm again trying to build this conceptual understanding in math. And what I'm allowed to do here is ask clarifying questions. Ask specific questions. This does not replace the teacher. This does not replace direct instruction. This is not replacing problem solving. All this is doing is helping me clarify understandings and develop a better conceptual understanding of something like p-value. And now it's giving me a very specific example of p-value in 
basketball. But it was a little bit complex. So, notice it's giving it to me in simpler terms. There's less academic vocabulary, which has pros and cons. The grammatical structure is less complex. The syntax is a little bit easier and it's subtle, but it has shifted from third person to second person in voice. And that's significant. That shows you kind of the power of AI in terms of being adaptable. It's really interesting. So I'm going through this, I'm looking at it, I'm, 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 I'm understanding it. And now as a kid, I might say, can you show me a picture of an of a p-value in a graph? And the answer is no. Right? So as a kid, I'm starting to hit my limitations on this. Again, and the answer is no. So it is fully text-based. Now there are other AIs out there that are already doing pictures and graphs and links to real-time data. But for now, because chat uh, GPT is the most popular, the answer to this is no. But it's giving really um, solid answers. It's very text-based. And I might wanna know what type of graph would I use in a p-value? So now I wanna know, you know, what's the ideal graph? And it really is gonna depend on the data set that we have. And so it's gonna walk me through all of these different data sets. If you're looking at a relationship between two variables and a hypothesis test, if I'm, um, you know, looking for correlational data, you know, when I might use a scatter plot, when I might use um, other types of, of um, Gra uh, graphical representations, um, visuals. And so now I'm beginning to wonder, how do I actually create one of these? So as a student, I'm gonna put down, how do I find the p-value in Google Spreadsheets? And notice, it's actually all right there. So even though this is text-based, it's gonna give me an opportunity to literally copy and paste the code into my spreadsheet. It's gonna explain it to me. It's gonna show me kind of uh, visually what it looks like. You know, the answer is pretty phenomenal. So what does this mean in the end? What it means is that um, AI will be a phenomenal tool for clarifying, for um, developing deeper understanding, for um, improving our conceptual understanding in math. There are already programs out there that, that, that sort of focus on the procedural sides of math, like photo math. Um, but what I love about this is it really helps students who are maybe not understanding a math concept interact with an AI and take it to the next level. Now, is it as good as a teacher? No, it never will be. Is it as good as peer interaction? No, it will never be as dynamic as peer interaction because peer interaction will always have that relational element. But can it be a powerful tool for students who are confused? Absolutely. Who need to clarify? You bet. Who need a review of some ideas? Definitely. The challenge is are we making sure that students are getting a chance to also rephrase it, summarize it in their own words? What we don't want is a student going to the chat, getting the answers, and then forgetting everything. And so the next level is how do we take this and help students move this into their long-term memory? And it very well might be that they go to the chat, they take the chat's answer, and then they rephrase it in their own words. But Again, I think this is a powerful tool, and here's how you might use it in a high school statistics class.